Welcome to the PM services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, January the 31st. We'll be singing a few songs and praying a couple of times, and I will deliver a lesson to you uh, from Luke the 8th chapter. And so if you would, if you have your songbooks, Songs of Faith and Praise, you will uh, get the gist of what uh, the lesson is about, I hope, from the songs that we've chosen. If you will turn your books to number 472, 472, we'll sing verses 1 and 3, 472. <clears throat> The Lord's our rock, in him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever will be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land. A weary land, oh Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. The raging storms may round us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We'll never leave our safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. 189. Master, the tempest is raging. We will sing all three verses, and then we will sing the chorus. All three verses, and then the chorus. Master, the tempest is raging, the billows are tossing high. The sky is overshadowed with blackness, no shelter or help is nigh. Carest thou not that we perish, how canst thou lie asleep? When each moment so madly is threatening, a grave in the angry deep. Master, with anguish of spirit, I bow in my grief today. The depths of my sad heart are troubled. Awaken and save, I pray. Torrents of sin and of anguish sweep o'er my sinking soul. And I perish, I perish, dear Master. Oh, hasten and take control. Master, the terror is over. The Alamo sweetly rests. Her sun in the calm lake is mirrored. And heaven's within my breast. Linger, O oh, blessed Redeemer. Leave me alone no more. And with joy I shall make the blessed harbor and rest on that blissful shore. The winds and the waves shall obey thy will. Peace, be still, peace, be still. Whether the wrath of the storm toss sea, or demons, or men, or whatever it be, no water can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and earth and skies. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. 
Peace be still, peace be still, they all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace, peace, be still. And number 642. Six forty two. Brightly beams our Father's mercy from this light house evermore. But to us he gives the keeping of the lights along the shore. Let the lower lights be burning. Send the gleam across the wave. Some poor fainting, struggling seamen, you may rescue, you may save. Dark the night of sin has set hold. Let the angry billows roar. Eager eyes are watching, longing for the lights along the shore. Let the lower lights be burning. Send the gleam across the wave. Some poor fainting, struggling seamen, you may rescue, you may save. Trim your feet. Oh, lamp, my brother, some poor sailor tempest us, trying now to make the harbor in the darkness may be lost. Let the lower lights be burning. Send the gleam across the wave. Some poor fainting, struggling seamen, you may rescue, you may save. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for a time that we have that we can just dedicate to you in song and in, uh, in prayer and in getting into your word. I pray to Heavenly Father that you'd be with us this evening as we uh, just uh, worship you with all of our hearts. You are so dear to us and we want so much to have a loving and uh, kind relationship with you. I just pray to Heavenly Father that uh, our faith would grow each day and that we might come to understand what it means to stay close to you. Be with those on our prayer list, dear Heavenly Father, those that are suffering, those that have physical maladies and those that may have spiritual maladies. Pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would be with them and uh, that you would comfort them as only you, the God of comfort, can do. Uh, continue to be with us this evening. Help us to uh, really get uh, something out of our lesson this evening that we can take with us through the week. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the last song is not in the book. It's a children's song. Uh, if you've been around the church long enough, you know the wise man built his house upon the rock. And so we will be sing that song, and we will not do the motions, okay? The wise man built his house upon the rock. 
The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up, and the wise man's house stood firm. Oh, the foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand, and the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down, and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the foolish man's house went splash. Oh, build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings will come down. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord. I hope you indulged me a little bit with the singing of that song. I hope it brought back some memories for you. You may have noted a, uh, uh, a hint of the sea or the oceans uh, in the songs that we sang. And it's because the, the lesson uh, will come from uh, Luke, the eighth chapter. Luke, the eighth chapter. Starting with verse 22 and going through to verse 25. So I'd like to read those verses if you have your Bibles or your devices with you, it is Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. Now on one of those days, Jesus and his disciples got into a boat. And he said to them, let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they launched out. But as they were sailing along, he fell asleep. And a fierce gale of wind descended on the lake. And they began to be swamped and to be in danger. They came to Jesus and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're perishing. And he got up and rebuked the wind and the surging waves. And they stopped. And it became calm. And he said to them, Where's your faith? And they were fearful and amazed, saying this, that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. The title of my lesson this evening is Jesus, the constant in our life. Do you know what the word constant means? If you have any math background, in mathematical jargon, the constant is the value which cannot be changed or does not change during a process. If you remember your algebra days, x plus 5 equals 9. 5 and 9 were the constants. x was the variable. We're going to uh, circle in and talk about a constant. And so let's be reminded of the little story. We have this small but I think mighty account of the Lord calming a storm. And since we're in the eighth chapter of the book of Luke, uh, fairly early, he has only chosen his disciples about two or three chapters before. And so it's early in Jesus' ministry. And understand, Jesus gives instructions to the disciples when they get into the boat. 
let's go over to the other side of the lake. And they begin their trip, and afterwards, as they are moving across, this storm comes up. Now, I don't know if you're a land lover or if you have had experience on the ocean or in the bays, but I will let you know when storms come up, it can get pretty fearful and one can get pretty scared. If you're out there in a boat, and it's not a very big boat, there is always a danger of the winds starting to gather up. And when they blow, they gather up the waves. The disciples, when the waves started to come, got afraid. And it says that the waves began to swamp the boat. Now, let me tell you, getting your boat swamped is scary. Most of you that know me know that for years and years, my summer job in between teaching was going out in the bay and clamming, catching clams for a living. And so you were at the peril of the bay, and remember most of the time the bays are pretty much protected. But from time to time, storms come up. I have this wonderful story that I like to tell. It happened fairly early in my clamming career, and I had a little 13-foot boat, 13-foot Boston whaler. 13 feet is not very big. And by luck of the draw, I didn't mean for this to happen, but I wound up with two partners. One of the two partners was a young man that I was coaching, and the other partner was a six-foot-tall, 225-pound uh, guy that used to pay linebacker for Temple University. We took our boat out across Great Bay to what is familiarly called the fish factory, and we clammed, and we were in the lee of the island, and we didn't realize that the winds had started to pick up because the island was protecting us. And so when it was time to come across Great Bay and make our way into Oyster Creek, when we got out of the lee of the island, I realized we were in trouble. We had three people in the boat. We had about 3,000 clams in the boat. And we had three and a half, four foot waves hitting us on the port quarter. That means the left hand corner. The two guys in the boat were not seamen. They were along kind of not for the ride. They were clamming with me, but they didn't know much about all of this. And they thought this was kind of great fun until the waves started to break over the boat. And I let them know, with whatever device you have, your masks, whatever you have, get water out of the boat. And we had to turn the boat and go in a different direction uh, because we could not fight the waves going across. Getting swamped by water in a boat <laughs> is a scary proposition. Clamors have an old story out there. Uh, if you have anybody with you and you've worked all day and this happens, uh, what do you throw overboard? Do you throw over the clams or do you throw over one of the clamors? It, bad joke, I know. You don't want to throw your uh, day's work across but you, uh, away, but you don't want to uh, throw a person out either. Well, if you imagine, the disciples are in the boat, and at least two or three of them have a fishing background. We know that when Jesus chose his disciples. And the disciples were afraid. They were so afraid that they woke Jesus up. He was just sleeping away in the boat. And when Jesus got up, it says he rebuked the sea and it calmed out, and it got into a very, very, very brief dialogue with his disciples. 
It's brief, but it's poignant. He said to them, where's your faith? Just a few words. Where is your faith? Now, if we put ourselves in the place of the disciples, do you think you'd have been afraid? I'm telling you right here and now, I would have been afraid. Luke, in verse 23, reaffirms, reaffirms the danger that they were in. And Jesus is the one who told the disciples to make their way across the lake. Now, we're going to try to make some application here. Um, waves, gusts of wind, faithless worry, we're not going to debilitate the original plans of Jesus. Jesus' plans were to get his disciples and that boat over to the other side of the lake. And what we find out is this. Unfortunately, the storm of fear was mightier than the calm of faith for these disciples. Now, why do we say this? They had Jesus Christ, the Messiah, in the boat. Did they actually think that Jesus, the Messiah, would let them drown? And so there are several truths to be garnered from this story that we can glean from this brief account of Jesus and his disciples. And I'd like us to consider them for just a moment. In Luke chapter 8, verse 22, Jesus is the one who said, let's go to the other side. Jesus leads to the shore. Jesus is the one who will lead you and I to safety. The Lord gave the destination. The disciples had problems with the journey. Our destination is heaven. Are there going to be any storms on our journey? Will our faith, will our faith help us to endure during the storms? Or will the storms be bigger than our faith? It's like that old saying, you show me your storm and I'll show you my God. So first, Jesus leads to the shore. Secondly, from verse 23, there were real waves out there. There was real wind. It was real water that was swamping the boat. This wasn't fake stuff. This is a story. And so we're not trying to downplay the reality of this situation. However, the disciples definitely downplayed the might of God and the power of faith. Faith can overcome surrounding variables. When the temptations of life strike, it's our faith that must come to the forefront. Our faith must carry us through if we want to make it to our destination. Remember, Jesus wants to lead us to the shore, 
even though danger is a reality. Now let's get back to my title. Jesus is the constant in times of chaos. Notice the disposition of Jesus. Do you think he didn't know there was going to be a storm? This is Jesus. This is the Savior. Did you think he didn't know there was going to be a storm? And yet, he was able to go to sleep. What felt like the end of the world to the disciples was merely just a brief experience for Jesus. We might compare this to the pandemic we're in. We've been in this for just about a year. Do you remember in March and April, people didn't want to go to the grocery store? Uh, few cars on the road, many people not going to work, schools not being in, but rather being virtual. It was kind of interesting. Uh, my son is a teacher, my youngest son in Philadelphia. And when the pandemic hit, school went virtual. And so he was teaching from home. And he was able to set in the beginning before all the Zoom classes, in the beginning, he was setting his schedule and setting things up for his students. And so he had his time, had time on his hands. And my son and I both loved to fish. And about one time a week, we would meet off of Clark's Landing Road, Hay Avenue in the Mullica River, and we would go fishing together. You know what? The fish didn't know there was a pandemic. And as time went on, it became March and April. The grass started to get green. Leaves started to get on the trees. Flowers started to bloom. Do you know what? They didn't know there was a pandemic. The sun came up every morning, set every night. The stars were in the sky. The moon went through its phases. Everything remained constant through the storm of the pandemic. The birds sang, clouds wafted across the skies, mountains still stood, oceans were still there, the tides went in and the tides went out. And what it shows is that even within the chaos of the horrible pandemic that we're in, Jesus was still in control. It didn't alter everything around us. All the natural forces of nature were still in place. It goes to show that even within all of this, there is a constant. And what I'm here to tell you this evening is that Jesus is our constant. Jesus is that rock that we can depend on. Even though we sang the song, Master, the tempest is raging, we know that he's the shelter in the time of storm. We know that there's a lighthouse, and Jesus is that lighthouse helping us to get to shore. And though the dangers are a reality, that Jesus is our constant in times of chaos. And finally, we sang that children's song. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and it beat on the house 
but it did not fall because it was founded on the rock. The rock is Jesus, the constant. And through all that happens in our lives from day to day, whether it is the COVID pandemic, whether we have losses at home, whether there are sicknesses, whether we have people that are ill, whether we have people that are having spiritual issues, Jesus is still the constant. He's still the rock. He may have gone asleep <laughs> in the boat, but he knew what was going on. And so let's not force Jesus to look at us the way he looked at his disciples when they were so very, very fearful and asked us, where's your faith? Let's make sure that our faith in our Lord is rich and it's powerful because Jesus is that rock. He is that constant and he will lead us to the shore. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Jesus, the rock of our salvation, the shelter in the time of our storm. And even though it may seem that the tempest is indeed raging, we know that Jesus will lead us to the shore. Help us to live our lives in such a way that we realize that no matter how big the storm, we have a God that's bigger. We have a Savior that will guide and guard us and set us on the right path. Help our faith to be powerful. Help it to be rich. And help us, dear Heavenly Father, to always be tender to your touch and realize that in your Son, we have hope of living with you eternally. Be with us through this evening and through our lives until we meet again. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please stay safe and may God bless you all.